Hope you guys enjoyed that hair flip. Uh, happy Tuesday. It is Nutrition Topic Tuesday. So I'm gonna kick you guys off with a question that I know we're probably gonna have some great answers to. Um, how often are you eating during the day? Um, I can say for myself right now, it definitely varies, but pretty frequently um, going over to Snacky Snack often during the day. Um, so go ahead and let us know how many times you're eating during the day. Maybe you hit one big meal, a couple meals, um, six meals. Maybe you're just nonstop eating all day. Um, who knows? Let us know. Comment in the comments below. Or if you're taking class, obviously, you don't have to worry about watching this. You can share that uh, answer with your coach in your Zoom class. Um, just talking about how often you're eating during the day. Um, there are multiple approaches to meal frequency. Um, we know that that can be intermittent fasting, um, so saving your meals for later in the day, uh, maybe having a few large meals, like three big meals a day, uh, multiple small meals, like six meals a day, um, maybe having snacks throughout the day, or you're focusing on having like post-workout uh, carbs, Maybe you have different ways of approaching your meal frequency. Um, the important thing with meal frequency is considering what works best for you and satisfies your hunger needs, keeps you feeling the best. So there's no right or wrong way um, to approach it. If you like eating six meals a day, go ahead and do that. If you really enjoy three meals a day, do that. You don't have to focus as much on meal frequency as we maybe consider. Um, so right now, we're currently spending more time in proximity to the kitchen. We're frequently snacking. Um, I know that's for myself. It can become an issue. So now would be a good time to reflect on the importance of the quantity of food that we're getting in a day. Um, are we eating enough? Are we eating too much um, actual calorie intake? Um, and then the quality of the foods that we're eating, are we going to the pantry and grabbing goldfish or uh, pouring a bowl of cereal, or are we eating um, an apple, having some cut up veggies and hummus? Like, what is the quality of the food that we're eating and snacking on? I mean, the consistency with nutrition. So, how do our meals look overall? Not just that one time perfect meal or that one time bad meal. I know we call them bad, um, there's no such thing as good and bad food. Um, but looking at the consistency of your nutrition right now is important. Um, and then you can design a plan for when to eat the food that you might, that might better help you navigate your boredom and stress eating. So meal frequency is the last step in the hierarchy of nutrition. So what we're gonna look at first is kind of the other um, steps. What is most important? One would be like, how much are we eating? That's always an important thing is like the quality or quantity of the food that's going into our body does make a difference. Um, you're overeating, then you're giving your body excess calories, um, which are often converted into excess weight. Um, if you're under eating, you may be burning calories, but you also can be putting your body into uh, a stress state. So some things to think about, how much are you eating? How much food are you eating? Second thing would be, how are you eating? Um, are you distracted? Are you being mindful? Are you with your meal and present? Are you standing, sitting with family? All those things. Um, why are you eating? Are you hungry? Are you bored? Are you stressed? Are you sad? A um, hundred different reasons that you could be eating. Um, and then what are you eating? Are you having whole unprocessed foods, meat, veggies, nuts, seeds, whole, uh, whole grains, you know, fruit, all those things? Um, or are you eating highly processed foods right now? The fifth thing to consider would be are you eating the same quantity of high food consistently? So are you doing number one, the quantity, the amount, and number four, the quality, are those happening pretty consistently? Are you consistently eating the appropriate quantity of high quality foods? Um, that's, those are kind of the most important thing from that step five really encompasses step one and four because that's where it really matters. And then step six would be, when are you eating? Does the meal timing matter? Does how often you're eating throughout the day matter? Um, it matters after you're looking at all those other steps. So if all you're gonna do is change up how often you're eating, but you're gonna eat the same amount, it's not gonna really make a huge difference. Maybe it'll keep you satisfied more. Um, but overall, we wanna look at those first five steps and then we can consider 
how often we're eating. There's a whole article on this topic. So if you want to look at the precision nutrition article, it is linked um, in our blog post today. I think it's really helpful to kind of see that the importance doesn't lie really as much in meal frequency as it does in how much um, and what you're eating. So during this time, it might be beneficial to plan out your day in a different way. Rather than planning how many times you're eating, plan out the food you're going to eat and then use the day um, and how you're feeling to decide when to eat that. I think setting a schedule as well can be helpful just to keep you from like going into the kitchen mindlessly. But if you have that list of foods and that you know amount of food that you're going to eat and the quality foods already planned out for your day, if you end up eating them as like one big meal or you eat them as multiple little snacks throughout the day, that's kind of up to you. Um, focus on that, you know, one in four per first. So that's our nutrition topic today. I think it's a pretty good one for the time that we're in. Um, it's something to consider going forward. You can experiment with how often you eat during the day. Um, for today, we're gonna get warmed up, get that body good and primed. We're gonna hit an upper body pre wad So you can see that here, we've got some arm rotations. Um, should be with really lightweight, if even weight. Um, this is very much focused on the stability muscles. So they're not like growing. We're not trying to like bulk up or something here. We're focusing on the stabilizer so that when we're back in the gym and we're trying to clean or snatch or push press weight, um, we're not just shocking our little muscles um, into having to stabilize overhead weight. Um, we're gonna do some W to Y presses. So same thing here, really focusing on pulling the shoulders down and back, getting us ready for when we're back on that pull-up bar. Um, and then some single arm slider push-ups. So for those slider push-ups, you can either grab like if you have a slider or maybe you have um, like a little rag or something like that in your house and some hardwood floors. If you don't have any of that, um, we can just do regular push-ups or I can give you guys another option there. Um, and then we're going to rest. We're going to get into that hollow body position again, either into a um, handstand hold on the wall or we're going to press into the wall in our hollow body position. Um, then we're going to hit a workout today called Herky Jerky. It does have a 20 minute time cap um, and some scaling options there depending on what you have for equipment. So just getting warmed up, let's share those movements. We've got burpees, shoulder taps, gorilla burpees, mountain climbers, hiked toe taps, Spider-Mans and push up to down dog. Just going through this for eight total minutes. So starting with those burpees, laying down, popping up, just getting the heart rate up with five there. After those five burpees, we're gonna go into our plank position, get that core and shoulders warmed up. We've got 10 shoulder taps. We're gonna go from those 10 into 10 bottom half burpees or gorilla burpees they're called. Just popping your hips through and back down. 10 of those. After 10 of there, we're gonna go into 20 mountain climbers. Then we're gonna go into 10 hiked toe taps. We've got 10 Spider-Mans twisting up to the ceiling. And then five of those push-ups into down dog. So that will get you good and warmed up. Going through that for eight total minutes. Get a few rounds there. Getting into our arm rotations. So with this, if you have something super light like a soup can, that's great. Um, I wouldn't recommend anything more than five pounds, probably a little bit too much for those stabilizer muscles. We're gonna sit nice and high, like we're in supermodel pose. You can actually bring one leg down, so if anyone knows like supermodel, you usually go across. We're just gonna hang out with one leg up. Um, you're gonna make a 90 degree angle with your arm, and then you're actually just gonna maintain this you can, rotating at the shoulder, so keeping that squared up. And then bring this back up here. So bring that hand down towards the leg, and then back up in front, looks like this. Rotating in, getting that good shoulder muscle active here. We're gonna do 10 of those. You can add holding onto something like a can. Nice and controlled. Again, you wanna be nice and controlled and isolate that shoulder here. Um, we're going to do 10 on the right and then 10 on the left. Then we're going to go into 
um, y or w to y's. So with those going to be standing, have those soup cans in hand if you want soup can, something lightweight, pull the shoulders down and back. You're going to start in a w position here. Pulling the shoulders down and back, pressing out to a Y, and then pulling yourself back down to the W and up to a Y. Watching from the back, pulling those lats down, back up to a Y. So we'll do 15 of those nice and controlled. You can do that without any weight, any cans. Activating those shoulders, pressing up, and then pulling down. If you have um, a band and you want to hold that band behind you in that Y and press it up to a W and back down, that's an option too. Um, something lightweight. Then we have um, five right side slider push ups, five left side. I will show those here. Um, if you have anything, honestly, I'm going to use the cat to lay here. Um, you can use like um, a rag, anything like that on a soft surface, not a wet rag, you want to dry one here. Um, and then you're going to put your hands on it, you're going to be in your push-up position, you're going to lower, as you lower, your arms go straight out, maybe up to like a little bit of a Y, and then you're going to push through the right arm, or the left arm, sorry, the arm that's on the ground, and then slide back up. The scale for this would be to do it on your knees, sliding out, sliding back up. If that's too challenging, we can just stick with 10 regular push-ups, but otherwise we'll do five on the right and five on the left. Notice you're going from straight, you're pressing through the arms on the ground and then slide yourself back up. It's like, I don't like that you're playing with my toy. Um, so we'll do 15 of, I'm sorry, 10 of those five right, five left. We're gonna rest for two total minutes and we're gonna get into our 10 sets of handstand holds. So we're either going to kick up onto a wall here for 20 seconds. If you have to um, wall walk up into that hold, you can do that. Otherwise, we're going to get into a hold in the wall here. So pressing into the wall, you're then going to howl hold, lifting those legs, lifting that head through the window. Or you can bring one leg in or both legs. Really driving through that wall, just like you would the floor. We'll be holding for 20 seconds there and 20 seconds of rest. All right, so after we've gone through our 10 rounds of 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 20 seconds off on the handstand hold or wall hold, um, we'll go into herky jerky. So for herky jerky, if you have a 20 minute time gap, um, it is 50 wall balls. Obviously most of us don't have a wall ball or even a wall ball target, but if we do, we can do wall ball thrusters or you can do um, wall balls to a target properly. Um, otherwise we're gonna do our thrusters with a dumbbell in both hands or a kettlebell in both hands. So like holding one kettlebell, one dumbbell in both hands. Then we have 40 single arm in a hang position, clean into jerk, alternating through those 40 reps. We're gonna go into 30, holding onto that same dumbbell, um, 30 step ups. So I'll show what we can do for that. We'll otherwise do forward lunges. You can choose to hold that in a goblet position or hanging down. Then we're gonna hit an 800 meter run. Um, if the weather's not great for an 800 meter run, you can do a 1000 meter row if you have a rower, um, or you can just do 250 double unders, just do 250 double unders, or four minutes of running in place, or four minutes of single unders. So the only things that are gonna be uh, like quantified would be either 800 meter run, 1K row, or 250 dubs. If you don't have double unders and you're doing single unders, you're gonna do four minutes of them. And if you're just jogging inside, you're gonna do four minutes of running in place or toe taps. Um, so those are your options. And then you're gonna go right back the opposite way, 30 single um, dumbbell, single dumbbell box step ups or the four lunges, 
uh, 40 clean and jerk, and then finish with those 50 wall balls. So just getting ready, we're gonna break down some of those movements here, um, get warmed up, holding an imaginary goblet position here. Should we go through five air squats, focusing on full depth for that wall ball today. Then we're gonna add in five push press, so dip, drop up overhead. So this is where I'll grab, um, since I don't have a wall ball, I would have my weight here, dip, drop up overhead. After that, you can go for those five thrusters, full squat, drag through, press up overhead. You can also choose to hold it this way if you'd rather. I just feel like that might hit you in the face, so up to you. Um, same thing if you have a kettlebell, you can hold your kettlebell both arms. Um, if you don't want to go up overhead with that, if that's too challenging of a weight, we'll just go 50 goblet squats. And say you don't have any weight, 50 air squats. Um, then we have our 40 single arm hang clean and jerk. We just got that upper body ready to go. So should be the same weight, somewhere around that 35 uh, RX version would be 50, 35, something you can easily cycle for at least 40. You're gonna go ahead and get ready for that hang position. Kind of like the kettlebell swing, you're gonna send those hips back, chest stays nice and high. Then you're gonna drive straight up. If you're not driving out, you're driving straight up, shrugging the elbow nice and high and leaning on the shoulder. Let's see what this. That's the clean. You can just go through a few cleans here, alternating arms. And then we'll add in warming up that jerk. So we just did that push press. You can try that out single arm here. If you need a different weight for the two movements, um, you can. And then we're gonna go not, not between the clean and the jerk, but if you need a different weight from your wall ball to your clean and jerk. So hang clean and jerk, so look at this. We're adding in that punch under, stand it up. So Punching under, standing. We'll go through 40 of those. For those step ups, depending on what you have, like I have a couch that's about this height, you know, just about a normal box step up height. Um, if these chairs are a little bit too high, if you have a chair, like a normal chair at home, these are stools, but if you have a chair at home, you can step up to that. Um, bench, anything like that. You're gonna do your dumbbell step ups, holding that dumbbell on your side. Stepping up, or you can hold it on your back, you can hold it in the front rack, whatever you want. And then the scale would be if you have nothing to stand to step up to, hold it in that front rack position here, lunge it out, forward lunge for those 30, or you can go on your back, like I said, you can hold it on your side here. If you want to go for 30 lunges in a suitcase, suitcase hold, all options are fine, it just has to be hold, held on. To that weight. And then we have our running. So in place running, I still want you guys to focus on techniques. If you are in place running, lifting that foot to about knee height. I like to think about it like a pigeon, uh, not a pigeon, a uh, flamingo. Um, so lifting that ankle is almost connected to your calf, comes up to your knee. So in place running for four minutes. It kind of looks more like high knees. Right, because when we run, we should be making that nice connection moving forward. Um, so we're not just like dilly dallying like this. Try to lift up those feet, get the hamstrings engaged. Um, or you can row, or you can do toe taps, or your 20, 250 double unders. Um, then you go right back into that single arm step up, the clean and jerk, and finish with your 50 thrusters or wall balls or uh, squats. So lots of variations today depending on what you have for equipment. If you have a box, awesome. If you don't, you're doing lunges. Um, if you have nothing to step up to, yeah. If you have any questions on what you should do for your workout, let us know. Otherwise, have some fun with this one. There's a 20 minute time cap. Definitely don't spend more than 20 minutes. Just get through this one. <laughs>